Hello. Something important is happening in the live streaming world, and I came across one of the most instructive and future-telling videos about the space, and we have to talk about it. I've never seen a breakdown of the future of the live streaming space so well explained inadvertently in a video. So it should be no surprise that this video is actually from Pokimane, one of the greatest content creators the internet has ever known. And if you're interested in the future of live streaming, this is the video for you. Before we begin, I'm Devin Nash. I own an ad agency called Nova, which builds authentic creative campaigns to connect influencers and brands together. I'm super fascinated with marketing and advertising in the new media world. So you are here for a deep dive into that subject, and we are not going to disappoint. The context of this is a video that Pokimane made a few days ago as the time of this recording that basically kind of outlines her thoughts on streaming going forward as she's been streaming now for the better part of seven years. And it also coincides with an interesting quip we're going to look at later from Ninja, where he basically just quits Fortnite on the spot, says he needs a break from streaming, changes all of his social media accounts. We're going to kind of look into that as well. But all of this is instructive. And I think that this is the best video I've ever seen that describes what the long-term future of streaming is like and what a lot of the broadcasters at a top level are going through or are going to go through. And that is what we are talking about here. So let's start with um, a premise. I'm going to make a kind of bold claim here that I don't think, and I, I haven't thought for a long time, that the, fu the future of live streaming is sustainable. So, so what do I mean by that? What I'm saying is I don't think that live streaming, like streaming on Twitch, streaming on YouTube Live, the process of live streaming as it is, is something that most people can keep up for multiple years. I think that the top people in this industry are going to have very short careers and that most people are going to find as they're going up through the tiers of viewership and partnership that the live streaming space is not going to support what they want out of their life. That's a pretty crazy claim because I'm basically saying that like live streaming is sort of doomed to fail. But I'm going to explain that in the context of this video as Pokimane puts some really great points to this. And there's some pretty big announcements from her in here. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but mostly focus on some of the things she said. So I want to start with um, this right here, which is why she is taking a break or why she took a break and then what's going to continue to happen. Let's read this. That I can build up the courage. <laughs> Of course, for starters, all the classic reasons that people take breaks, feeling burnt out or tired of reading the same annoying comments. I moved and I didn't realize like for the first couple weeks how much I had been putting off doing all the things I need to do to take care of myself. Decor so she says right here, like, OK, there's good. There, like, I'm getting these same comments over and over. And this is supported, too, by this quip. And then we're going to kind of talk about this. Recognize that putting myself out there so much, especially streaming, it revolves around this constant feedback loop of people telling you what they think of you from. So this is the first kind of thing I want to talk about in live streaming that is really unique from all other forms of new media. You get comments in a way in, in live streaming that you absolutely just don't get through any other method like Twitter and YouTube and everybody that has been a content creator in any sense can can look at probably hundreds of negative comments that have been made about them over time, the most popular people at least, uh, whether it be like Reddit threads made about them or Twitter threads or whatever. But all of that kind of feedback is sort of opt-in. You can actually put processes in your life, and most successful content creators do end up doing this, where you mitigate the, the amount of negative feedback that's coming in. But Twitch and, and other live streaming doesn't allow you to do that. The, the chat is live, so you're getting that feedback in real time often before your moderators can ban it. So um, I think that this actually produces two effects. In normal people, it produces the effect that Pokimane has, which is that it, it just becomes exhausting over time. Uh, keep in mind that the average streaming schedule, we're going to talk about this more, this is important later, that the average streaming schedule is seven to eight hours a day, where, where top broadcasters are, are broadcasting upwards of 10 to 12 hours a day, six to seven days a week. These are just crazy hours. And that entire time, you've got this constant feedback loop of the, like 
this chat coming in, and, and not all of it is positive, especially for what we've uh, I've made many videos about this. Women content creators on Twitch and on live streaming services are, are, are notoriously objectified, have tons of problems with chat, but it's everywhere. That negativity is everywhere. And there are some positive comments, but the human mind tends to uh, navigate negative comments and, and appropriate those to have more importance than positive comments. So unfortunately, we focus on those negative comments and they um, keep stacking up. So Pokimane talks a little bit about that um, kind of aforementioned like objectification and like the, like specific to her like right here. She didn't say much I about like. it. Like for example, if people only reacted positively to when I wear my hair straight or when I take photos like this or when I do that, like you kind of just figure, oh, this is my job. I should just keep doing what performs or does well. So what she starts to state here is that she doesn't get a lot of time because she's getting all of this feedback coming in that she doesn't get a lot of time to actually step back and go, okay, what do I personally want like out of this? Like, what do I, what do I want? And so, as I mentioned before, this feedback loop that she was talking about in the former clip has the effect on normal people of basically saying, okay, this is exhausting. Like, this is so much feedback. I need to think about myself sometimes. I need to like step back. And, 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 and so people like Pokimane take these breaks periodically. Um, but it also produces another effect that I think is not really talked about. In fact, I haven't really heard anybody talk about in the in the Twitch space, which is this feeds the egos of narcissists. And it's why we tend to see narcissists at the top levels of Twitch. What, what do I mean by narcissists? I mean people that are obsessed with themselves. So if you listen to the number of times that the average broadcaster over 20,000 viewers is talking about themselves or says the word I, it's, a, it's very instructive as to how many, like what they think of their personalities. These are gen generally a lot of people that succeed on Twitch at high levels are obsessed with themselves to an insane degree. And they're always talking about themselves. Nar extreme or what we call grandiose nar narcissists in, the, in uh, psychology I shouldn't say wheeze. I'm not like a psychologist. I, I, I have a degree in psychology, but I don't think that means anything. Uh, but, but, but like what psychologists call grandiose nar narcissists are people who are able to think – they think about themselves all the time. But importantly, they're also able to caveat like all of the negative commentary about themselves and just like write it off instantly as BS and then just keep going. And, and, and so I, I think that the state of live streaming ostracizes normal people. And either they have to take long breaks because they're getting all this negative feedback and they're like, oh my God, and it's just the same repeats of stuff over and over again. Or they are narcissists and they absorb it all and they get bigger and bigger and more inflated. And that is a vicious cycle that is happening on platforms like Twitch where large broadcasters kind of get a community around them that starts to feed into whatever narrative that they are wanting to broadcast and then that narrative becomes stronger that community becomes more insulated and this is not just the only place we're seeing this happen we're seeing this happen kind of all over the world with um politicians and and, and leaders uh, social media is creating this um kind of bubble new media is creating this bubble where groups of people led by uh narcissists are getting more and more cemented in their thoughts and are, it's harder to move them. So I, I think Twitch is polarizing people at, at the top levels of live streaming that it's kind of forcing live streamers sort of out of the space that don't have this, um, that, that they have a filter that, that, are, that, that, are, that are healthy, which is not good because we start getting, um, I, I'm sure, well, I, I shouldn't list them here, but I'm sure you could imagine a lot of the top personalities on Twitch right now um, that, that may not be the most ethical people um, or the most morally interested in their community being uh, the best it can be. And I, I've spoken before um, about the moral obligation of Twitch streamers I, or people with platforms. I think if you have a platform, you ought to do well by the people that you um, are that are in that platform. You have a you have a gift, really. Like like it's not it's it's hard to get people to pay attention to you. If you have that, you should spend it. Uh, you should spend that as a currency wisely to, to take care of those people, right? And a lot of people don't. Unfortunately, narcissists are the last people we want to trust to um, uh, to do this. And, and so I've seen a lot of top content creators, especially lately, that are coming up through Twitch with a uh, with personalities that just do not fit the bill for taking care of a community. It's really unfortunate. Um, so let's talk. Let's keep talking though. Um, so she starts to describe. Um, something that I think is going to happen 
to a lot of broadcasters here, which is, um, and it's really cool to see. So let's watch this. And what I mean by that is I think my break really cemented within me this feeling I have to want to do a lot more than just streaming. So this is something that I, I, I think I've thought a lot about in the context of top creators. And it's something that when we started seeing the exodus to YouTube by larger creators like Ludwig, um, almost all of them in their departure videos said, sure, I get a bag for going to moving off this platform of Twitch and, and, and going to YouTube. But this the streaming hours that it requires to be successful on a platform like Twitch are insane. Like you've got to realize that the top broadcasters are putting in north of 220 to 250 hours a month into uh, for, for context that's like 70 80 hour weeks of just being online that's not including like any of the other stuff that goes into being a broadcaster i mean these are just w wildly crazy schedules compared to any other new media creators like youtubers who spend a fraction of that time even the people that are making highly produced content can outsource it better with teams but in live streaming, it's just you. It's only you that can really do it. And sure, you can have like support networks, but ultimately, like the hours in or the hours in. And uh, that that also is um, supported by the fact that you're not only in that space; you're you're also in this constant competitive environment. And Pokimane talks about that a little bit here. Uh, it, it feels like I just don't really want to participate in the rat race that is streaming. To be honest and then let's go a little bit forward because she talks about that even more and it's not the same pace and frequency that i feel is expected of full-time streamers whether you guys realize it or not there's such a pressure on streamers to follow every trend to capitalize on viewership to stream longer than the guy next to them or the guy that they share similar viewership with. Like it's just a hyper competitive industry. But ultimately the reason I say this is because I'm just at a point in my life where it doesn't feel creatively fulfilling to feed into that anymore. This is the most important clip in this video, I think. And, and um, everything in this sentence and what she just said is like so um, instructive to how top content creators are thinking right now. Um, Pokimane is not alone in this. She's just the first, one of the first people to really come out and talk about it, especially in such an eloquent way. So let's break down like kind of what she said. So whether you know it or not, there's such a pressure on streaming to follow every trend to capitalize on viewership or stream longer. Why? Because Twitch is a kingmaker system. The, even though the recommendation system on Twitch has gotten better over the past year and a half, the top broadcasts on Twitch that have the most viewership are always competing for viewers. You can look at a video I did. I'm not sure what it's called, but um, I could refer to it or I can link to it afterwards in the description. But it shows the percentage crossover of audience between large broadcasters is somewhere in the realm of 10 to 30% of the total viewership, often higher than lower. So, so I would... I would err on the side of like 25 to 30 percent, meaning that like between Mizkif or XQC's audience, two top content creators on Twitch, you're actually getting about three out of every 10 people being the same people watching that content. So if both of those people are online at the same time, then the the the, the content that is currently perf more interesting is going to perform better. It's going to get higher viewership. So this is forcing broadcasters to stream longer hours to, to sort of just out endure their their competition. You see this with like XQC, who's like psychotically able to broadcast 12 to 14 hour days every single day. And it's no surprise that he's the top number one on Twitch. You see this in all content creators at this level are putting in these hours because there's this sort of pressure system on Twitch and on live streaming services that creates this... Um, this feeling that you always need to be live. And if you don't capitalize on XYZ news, the, you know, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial or the Chris Will Smith stuff, you have to react to every single thing that every single person is doing. And that brings you to the second part of what she said, which is it doesn't feel creatively fulfilling to do that. This is really important. I think this describes uh, a, a future at Twitch, um, that is is important. We're going to bring out the notepad 
because, you know, it's a Devin Nash video. So the premise is Twitch isn't really sustainable for the long term. And I should say really streaming as live streaming isn't really sustainable live streaming in its current form. Because I don't think that includes some new forms of live streaming like TikTok Live or Instagram Live. We can talk about that in a little bit if I rem remember because it's not in my notes. And there's a couple of premises we've established here, right? We've established long hours. We've established huge mental health requirements, which uh, I also put a, in a video the, um, about streamer mental health. You can just Google that and Devin Nash probably comes out. But now we also see this important point, which is inherently low fulfillment. What does that mean? We're going to put in parentheses gaming and drama, okay? So what Pokimane says here about it not feeling creatively fulfilling to stream, I think what, what that means is that, you know, a lot of broadcasters, when they start off, they're quite young. So, you're, you know, you, some of them are starting off at like 18, 17, 16. I think Pokimane started when she was 16 and, and she was in school. And, and then continuing now she's it's been almost 10 years could she could have been eight years but somewhere in that realm and when you are that age things like gaming and drama more immediate things are more interesting to you that's why you see a lot of the the people that are following twitch live streamers at, at like the top levels trend to like very young audiences i think twitch is very hesitant to talk about its 12 to 18 year old audience because it doesn't want to ostracize advertisers. There's also some implications to that as well, like YouTube had to go through, where YouTube had to do the, eventually YouTube got affected by a, an act in, in the United States Congress called the COPPA Act, which made it illegal to advertise on videos that were f for kids. Uh, the, the justification being that advertising to kids, they don't have like the, the mental, the maturity to, to, to build up like barriers to advertising that, that adults do. And, and so it was deemed harmful to advertise to kids. And, and pretty much overnight, you saw a bunch of YouTube channels that were made for kids that were farming money because the, the CPMs on this was insanely high, uh, basically just disappear overnight. And um, I, Twitch doesn't want to go through the same thing. So they don't like release age stuff that much. And, and when they do, they really downplay the 12 to 18 year old audience. I think the 12 to 18 year old audience is way higher than Twitch says it is. And, um, you know, I would put it north of 40%, no problem. And um, all of our data at the agency is consistent with that. So so um, I think that when you're looking at those age groups, you, you tend to find people who are less interested in big picture stuff and like, uh, and the streamers themselves, right, are also interested in that gaming and drama. So the system works. The problem is that as people grow up, they start to want more out of not only like the content they're consuming, but also what they're doing. So like, I'm actually the, a perfect example of this for people that are watching this for the first time or don't know who I am. I was a Twitch, I, I should say I am a Twitch partner and uh, I haven't been live streaming for the better part of a year now, but formerly in 2012, when I was much younger, right? I was dancing around playing League of Legends all day and joking with chat. And as I grew up and I started to become more interested in other things, I wanted to start a business. I wanted to scale my, my, my life. I didn't want to do one-to-one -one live streaming where every hour that I put in is um, an hour that I get paid for. I wanted, uh, maybe it's a lot of money, but it's not leverage, right? Leverage is I can invest my time in creating a vehicle that makes me more time or more money. Same thing. So I, you can't do that in live streaming. It's, it's really hard unless you diversify to other platforms, which is the fourth problem, right? is no leverage. And what Pokimane is saying here by it doesn't feel creative, creatively fulfilling is the same realization that she, I, I think a lot of content creators at the top levels of Twitch are eventually going to have. Almost everybody is go, like by 30, except like the most degenerate people are going to be like, man, what else is there? Like I can't just keep doing the Fortnite dance for people. And we saw, I, I think that's where Ninja has been for a long time. Ninja just recently had, I, I said we would talk about this. Ninja just recently kind of had this sudden uh, blow up on stream. This is a couple of days ago where he basically was just like, I'm done. Spamming Ripticos every single, I've, I've, I've had enough, man. No, I'm not even fucking kidding, dude. And he just. Next foot, I gotta, I gotta get off, man. And I think he says, 
I'm sorry, dude. I know that we're, I know we were supposed to play all day. I I, I can't. It's all good, man. It's I'm sorry, good. dude. I, I'll talk to you later, Seth. Chat. I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna be live, man. I don't know where I'm gonna be live next. But I now there, there's been some interesting stuff around this in particular. For example, like he changed his name on like a bunch of social media platforms, and then like shortly after was departed from Twitch. So who knows? This could be like a marketing ploy or something for him switching platforms or something. Kind of seems like something he would do. Uh, but it begets something that we've seen from a lot of broadcasters, which is like I, I do believe that he genuinely tilted here. Otherwise, he's a fantastic actor, and he was just like I'm done and just kind of like rage quits off stream. There are a lot of instances of this, and it's just like once you are just older, you just don't want to deal with the same BS that you've dealt with before. Like this is just like kid high school shit issues. There's so many. This I run into this so many times in the agency world, where either it's an influencer issue or something going on with some drama or beef between two people. And I'm an older guy now. Like I, you know, I'm building up a family. I've got uh, like priorities out, outside of like what I'm doing here. Um, I've, I've got like a lot of goals and hobbies and shit that I pursue. I just don't care about this stuff. And like, you probably feel the same, right? Like, especially if you're how many minutes into a Devin Nash video, right? Like you're 20 minutes into a Devin Nash video right now. You're not, you're probably not the person who's going to be like, wow, what's the next thing that the next beef that XQC is going to have with it? Like it just feels very banal and like low to you. And that's what Pokimane means out of this creatively fulfilling thing. So I think what this does is this creates like a, a, a cap, right? There's like a ceiling where every content creator is just going to get sick of what made them popular. Um, we've seen this again with like people like Greek God X, where he started off, uh, he was known for jumping around his room and uh, to, to loud techno music. Right. And now he's just like, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, I just, I just don't want that to be a thing. I, I, I want to do something more meaningful. I want to create something more meaningful. Um, now we're, like, that's what you're going to see out of like basically all of these broadcasters. Um, now here's the real kind of, I think notorious thing about this is that, is that see now I think that Twitch knows this. And that Twitch is trying to put pressure on large streamers to prevent this from happening. And uh, you think you might think I'm crazy, but let's listen to this real quick. I feel like there's this pressure that people put on me, that I put on myself, that companies put on me, that contracts put on me, that makes me feel like Twitch has to be my bread and butter. Streaming and gaming has to be like the main thing that I do. And I think I just wanted to talk about it so I could mentally like remove that pressure so what happened what is she saying here this is also really important right is that twitch puts pressure on large streamers through paid contracts what so twitch pays a ton of money to large broadcasters to keep them streaming and what is the number one goal of those contracts in those contracts what is listed it's time streamed hours streamed talk to any broadcaster at the highest levels and say what are your kpis what are your goals what are your incentives what is your payment based on it is always hours streamed and it's always it's usually absurd amounts of hours streamed so i have negotiated many of these contracts i've seen many of these contracts i'm under nda for all of them so i can't tell you any details about them but i can tell you that universally across every single contract i've seen and everyone i've been reported to see there's the hour streamed that makes these contracts um, super duper important. Um, and, 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 and like it's the KPIs that are tracked in those contracts that is, is most relevant. So Twitch knows uh, about this burnout and knows that streamer time is not leveraged, meaning one hour in equals one hour of work, right? You can't ever leverage that time. You can't really have someone else stream for you. You can't really hire people to create content and then post it on your stream. That doesn't really work. People come for you. So Twitch knows this and they are making people stream more. Now, why would they be doing that? Well, I'm going to tell you why after we talk about this. You're 24 minutes into a Devin Nash video, which means this is time for the secret call out. Um, I love this part. If you all are watching this still, Oh my goodness, thank you for being so interested in, in, in deep dives on marketing and advertising. Um, post a comment and let me know that you are 24 minutes into this, you made it. And uh, I appreciate you, thank you. Some of the people from the last videos were like, oh, like I, I watched the whole thing, I can't believe the videos aren't longer. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> and then real quick, um, if y'all like what this is and uh, you wanna support it, you don't have to, it's always gonna be free. Um, I made about like 75-ish videos 
on patreon.com slash Devin Nash for five bucks. You get access to all of them. Uh, it's just, it's more marketing, business, advertising, teaching more of those specifics about marketing and uh, how to run a business that I don't think I can do on this channel because it's just not as popular of a topic. So if you're interested in that, go check out the Patreon. Five bucks gets you access to all those videos. If you don't want to support it, don't even worry. If you can't support it, you can't financially support it, then absolutely don't support it. It's just to uh, it's just to help me out and make, um, make more of these videos possible. Secondly, I do want to talk about Novo real quick. Novo is our agency. Go check out nexus.novo.tv if you are a creator if you are a person who is creating content, we have a service that's absolutely free. It will always be free and it helps you connect to sponsors. I'm just trying to get more creators uh, opportunities with sponsors. So go check that out. It's at nexus.node.tv or it's in the description down below. So now I'm going to tell you, um, thank you for waiting through that, uh, basically why Twitch is pressuring long streaming hours through contracts. Well, the answer is Twitch is in a bind, okay? And Twitch and Amazon is in a bind. Where on YouTube, more views on a video equals more hours watched equals more time to watch ads. But on Twitch, if a person isn't live, no ads are shown. So I can create a YouTube video. Ads can be shown perpetually on that video 24 hours a day. But Twitch, if a person isn't live, if Pokimane isn't live to 20,000 viewers and she doesn't run an ad, nobody sees those ads, which means that there's a huge amount of downtime or offline time that Twitch can't show ads. Now, that's bad because Twitch can only really monetize through ads. People that say, well, they can, they can monetize through subscriptions or bits. The problem with subscriptions or bits is they're not scalable. You always make the same amount of money if you're Twitch off of, off of a subscription, which isn't much. And the prices of running a platform like Twitch are extremely high. Any kind of live streaming platform requires large investments because of the encoding that goes into it because you're constantly streaming 1080p data. It's, it, it's, it's a lot of data. So Twitch can't really realistically make money off of subscriptions in the, in, in the way that is like profitable or the ROI or the returns that a, a business like Amazon would expect them to make. They can only do that through ads. Ads are something that you can dynamically price. You can price it based on your targeting. You can price it based on your category. So things like finance will, will always cost more than something um, that's like Minecraft or something. So Twitch has a essentially limitless profitability option with ads, but they are their limit is actually the availability of broadcasters to show these ads. This is why Twitch has implemented these incentive programs, such as the ad bounty system. And it's also why they're willing to pay hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars, number one, to keep broadcasters on the platform in form of exclusive contracts, but also to ensure that they are streaming the longest amount of time so they can show the most ads so they can make the most money. But unfortunately, this is something that is really unsustainable for broadcasters. Broadcasters like Pokimane, who have already made millions and millions of dollars, are not going to tolerate contracts like this, I think. I, th I think eventually what will happen is either A, they will move move to platforms with less expectation on those hours. For example, YouTube, where YouTube, you can go make a live stream. The YouTube contracts, the YouTube is very public about these contracts. They don't mind you talking about them, where Twitch is very secretive. They put everybody under NDAs and nobody can talk about what their CPMs are. Nobody can talk about what their, um, what their hours are. One of the things I, just a quick note, I'm going to rant for a second because I have time. It's a Devin Nash video. Um, as an agent, I, I, as a person in the agency world, as an owner in the agency world, I hate lack of transparency in contracts. You want to see a contract of mine, I will send it to you full stop. I sent my contract to Kotaku. I sent my contracts to Wired. I sent my contracts to the Washington Post. I don't care, right? I have nothing to hide. But when, and so when YouTube is very uh, forthcoming with their partners and says, yeah, talk about our contracts or whatever. You can see that the hours in their contracts are like streaming 100 hours a month, which like that, that might sound like a lot, but really that's a, like what, 30 hours, not even 30 hours a week, right? 20 hours a week? Yeah, literally like, like 20, 40, 60, 80, so 25 hours a week, right? So um, Twitch is very secretive about this. And my experience is when t somebody is hiding their contracts, it's almost always because they have something to hide. Right. So um, it annoys me but th that they're not transparent about this. And, and then when they are when they when they do show contracts like affiliate contracts or partner contracts, they're very vague and they're wording with stuff like exclusivity, which gets a ton of argument and stuff like that. We talked about in a couple videos ago. 
So I think ultimately people will either move to other platforms, they'll, 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 they'll move to places like YouTube where the streaming requirements are less and they can leverage the, the, the power of video on demand where they can get 24 hours of their videos being monetized um, and they'll make a little bit less money because you know at a certain level of success, that happiness is no longer correlated with the amount of money they're making. And that is absolutely where Pokimane is at. And so these content creators will start to find that the convenience of other platforms like Instagram or the convenience of other platforms like um, YouTube is just better. It's just better for a more fulfilling life. Listen to this. Lastly, and frankly, I've just been enjoying my time exploring other platforms. Like it's nice to just take a quick Insta story and share it and then continue to live my life or sit down for 10 minutes and film a little TikTok story time and upload it and then continue about my day. Like it, it's nice to be a little more like light touch here and there. It right, because you don't have to spend six to eight hours. When you click the start streaming button, you're essentially committing to a six to eight hour like stint in in video games, which is like a lot, like right, like like that's like, it's like a huge commitment when you click that button. It's one of the reasons why a lot of small content creators, and if you're one of these people, you can post a comment and support this. I know I've heard this from hundreds of you, where clicking the live streaming button can be a super daunting task. I mean, I was there, right? Like I, I was um, when I was live streaming, it was always hard to click the the start streaming button because I knew I was in that for the next eight to ten hours. That was it. And this cycle of content creation at this level can be exhausting. Right. Um, it's just it's just so tiring at some point where you're doing this every single day. And here's the thing that I want to circle back on is this idea of like the top broadcasters and what we're sort of creating with this kind of ecosystem. What sort of people do you think get popular and appeal to more people? You have to appeal to base emotions. Right. So, like you have to like like the thing is. What Pokimane is, is, I think, seeing, and I think all these top broadcasters are starting to see, is that if you want to get more popular, if you, like this cycle of content creation requires you to appeal to more base emotions like negativity, drama, politics, divisionary type of topics, right? You can't even create the stuff you want to create in that amount of time. You kind of have to hype up like a lot of like drama stuff or react stuff or things that get those eyeballs so that you can keep in what Pokimane properly referred to as the rat race. And as I have written down, this is exhausting. This is so tiring for normal people. But for people that are into this sort of thing, and again, I don't want to mention names, but I'm sure we could all think of them. The people that find this invigorating and love the attention they're getting from bringing on these dramatic issues, we start to platform and elevate people that have a way worse moral compass. And they, they, what they see is they see the connection between, ooh, if I create more drama, if I skirt the line, then I will get more views. And if you don't have the moral compass or just the normality to step back and say, you know what, that's not for me, or maybe I want to create some good in the world instead or put a good positive message out there, it starts to elevate very evil people. And I think that's what we're seeing on Twitch is a lot of the up and coming people, not all of them, but so, but, but many of them that are upcoming and, and um, are starting to get into things like gambling, or, uh, which are some of the most viewed things on Twitch, um, or, which are absolutely objectively harmful to people that are uh, in younger audiences, probably everyone. Um, they're starting to platform people that are more questionable, that I don't even want to bring up these people because I've, I, I, I could have made... Uh, I could have made a video about some of the people that have been recently deplatformed, and I, I think even bringing those names up just brings them attention they don't deserve. And, and, and but the, some of those people platform those people, and 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 that's not good for for younger audiences and and audiences in general. So as people, this is starting to attract and elevate some of the people that are okay with uh, uh, really questionable stuff to get viewers. And then the more normal and positivity creating broadcasters like Pokimane sort of take a step back and say, I want to do stuff that's more fulfilling, that doesn't have this kind of requirement on my time, that, um, that doesn't take this out of me, and I, I want to create something more meaningful. So we elevate these, these kind of questionable people up, these sus people, as you kids say, 
And then we pull back on the people that are messaging with positivity uh, because they're just normal. They can't, they can't take this kind of rigorous schedule and who can blame them? Like, like what other job out there um, requires this kind of commitment? You know, um, any other job like this that, 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 that um, meets these four, um, I mean, I can't even think of it. I was going to think of doctors, right? Because of the long hours and huge mental health requirements, but they have high fulfillment. Like they, they like they're saving lives most of the time, and they and they have leverage. You can build uh, practices or build hospitals or, or or private care things like that. So it's hard to find a job that that, that has all of this. <laughs> and and I think people come into realizing that once you start to get older and your energy isn't like limitless, um, that Twitch starts Twitch has a real problem. And, and, and so far, Twitch's answer to it has been, well, we're just going to pay people a ton of money. And hopefully the elephant in the room will go away and um, we'll just make these people stream 200 hours a month plus and, and, and we'll do it contractually or whatever. And then we will um, uh, be fine and, and, and everyone will be happy and Amazon will be happy and like we'll be profitable, right? That's not an answer. Like your large streamers are going to fall out from under you or you're going to have a platform with just purely shit content, which is ultimately why I left, right? Like, like I stopped streaming because I just fundamentally disagree with like the direction that content is going on Twitch. I, I, I hate the fact that most of the, the stuff you can watch over 30,000 viewers concurrently is immoral and um, kind of just outright evil a lot of the time. And, and that's because, again, these broadcasters are encouraged to skirt the line, um, this gray area of, of, of like forever getting the most amount of eyeballs without, you know, just, just skirting the ban cycle on Twitch. Um, and there's exceptions. What the good news about live streaming is that there's exceptions to this rule. And I talk about those. Some of the exceptions are, you, I, I find myself most of the time in smaller Path of Exile streams or smaller multiverse streams, like two of the games that I play quite a bit. And I love them. Like, you know, just like small gaming communities that I think Twitch was built on. I think Twitch was built on the, the foundation of those. Um, and, and we've moved away to the, from that to a large degree. And there's been some cool innovation that's come out of that, like the content that some of the creators make, um, big show content or... Um, some of the stuff in IRL is cool, right? Like uh, some of the stuff that like people like Jake and Bake do where they, uh, they they go out and show people the world and stuff. That's neat. Um, but it's also come at the cost of like some really low effort reacts content and um, just just sort of uh, just bad stuff at, at, at the higher level and, and immoral stuff. And, and that's just like more than I want to put on. So I kind of just hang out on the, the, uh, the smaller end of Twitch where I think that quality is still preserved. And secondly, I do think that live streaming is changing in the form of like TikTok as a platform or like um, Instagram Live, where the inherent discovery of those platforms that start with a large user base, like TikTok started with 2 billion users before it even start, like looked into live streaming. It created a live streaming platform and then fed that inherent discovery into the live streaming platform. So now you can go on TikTok right now and you can start up a stream and you will have 1,000 to 1,500 viewers if you were doing something interesting. That same thing is impossible on Twitch unless it's really interesting and it gets viral for some reason or somebody brings it up probably on another platform. Twitch's discovery system cannot and probably will never be able to support that kind of um, discovery. They just don't have the user base. Where like TikTok and Instagram Live now are enabling people to do real events in real time that have never been heard of before, which I think was like Twitch's dream in moving to IRL, but they just can't really do it because of the way they've built their system. All of these other platforms like Instagram and TikTok Live are built on the back of other monetization systems and that are better. Same with YouTube, right? YouTube, um, YouTube Live is built on the back of YouTube's VOD system, which can support YouTube Live. But Twitch doesn't never built their VOD system. Twitch and, and, and many live streaming services that are just exclusive to live streaming mixer right same type of thing never had a, a vod system never had any system that supported it so everything fell out from under it all of these other platforms have that system and then they can feed new users that want to check out live streams and don't want to dedicate like six to eight hours of their day every day to watching like the latest thing that happened with xqc or or, or mizkif or whatever they they want instead to just check out something that's cool and then peace out and maybe not follow that content or whatever. So a content creator is that you start to see a lot of interesting stuff show up that's never showed up on Twitch. One of the things that like shows up on TikTok Live a lot are these um, QVC type broadcasts where a person has a store and they're selling something like fingernail extensions or little eggs that you can open up that are like RNG of what you get inside. And people donate in, li in real time and they have no association. There's no brand like association with this broadcaster in particular. It's just something interesting that they're doing um, there's a dude that shoots uh, ping pong balls into cups and he actually built a brand on TikTok Live pretty successfully. I think like 
periodically has like 6,000 to 10,000 concurrence. So people are really underestimating the, um, the, the success of these other live streaming platforms. And I, and I think what's going to happen if it, you know, to, to put a guess on it, I, I, I think that brands and as long as Twitch continues this way, what, what Twitch really needs to do is build a supporting system like a VOD system, um, a competitive system that, that can keep people on the platform. And I think their best option at that was Clips. And for some reason, they still haven't like normalized Clips into like a central place where people can – this is just unbelievable that in 2022 we don't have this. That There's not a single page you can go to to see like the top performing Clips on the website. It would be easy as hell to code, but they just don't have it. We rely on Reddit for that. Like why do you have to go off-platform to see that? And you can just make an upvote system super easily, and and then you can moderate them too, right? Like it's so you could own it on your website, and you get way more watch time because you could put the watch time on the website, and you could run ads against those. I just don't understand it. It's just the dumbest business decision ever, 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 ever. But anyway, because Twitch hasn't built those supporting systems, they are on the track right now of sort of in, in, in inevitably failing. Because what will happen is people will people that that again. The, the, the content will just go downhill. We'll have like a world star hip hop situation where it'll just be for people that are into live leaks, right? Like those people that are just kind of into that super um, friend shit. And then people that are actually interested in real engaging educated content, education and content will move to YouTube, will move to other platforms. Streamers who are making stuff that is more creatively fulfilling will move to those other platforms because there's less pressure on them. And people that are doing short form content, which is like, I just want to show up and run a shop for a while, will continue to create their broadcasts on TikTok Live or Instagram Live. They never even considered putting that stuff on Twitch. Like you never even saw that cycle on Twitch. Nobody ever even tried. It's because those platforms are so much more uh, so much, so much, so much better fitting for that type of stuff. So that's essentially all I wanted to talk about. And I, I think overall, it, this just paints a really interesting picture of Twitch. I think this is probably the most interesting video that I've ever been able to make on the future of live streaming. And I, I'm blessed to be able to do it because Pokimane made such a, a, a phenomenal video about um, the, just, this is kind of the insight that you can only get from a top creator. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for coming out for it. Again, subscribe to Devin Nash channel if you want more of this. I make this kind of stuff all the time. Check out the Patreon if you're interested, and thank you for being here. Oh, and one more thing. We talk about this stuff all the time on discord.gg slash Devin. Yeah, that's it. the link's down in the description down below. Thanks for staying for the whole video. Let me know what you think, and if you think that I'm right about Twitch's direction and where you think things are going, uh, post it in the comments and let me know. Thanks, everybody. Bye.